So, I have found out that there is actually an Agatha Christie collection in my library, in our school library, and there's actually a couple books that I haven't been able to purchase, and this is one of them. Hello, fellow book questers, it is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today I got this great, awesome mystery book. Three Act Tragedy by Agatha Christie, herself the Queen of Mystery, and well, let's get right on to it. Sir Charles. Sir Charles is a retired actor, and he, and he basically invites 13 guests to come to his party. But by the end of his party, after drinking a cocktail, Mr. Babington, a harmless old man, old gentleman, dies. And then, a bit of time later, another similar death occurs, and Sir Bartholomew Strange thinks that it's murder. Meanwhile, Poro, Detective Poro, was also, of course, present at Sir Charles' party with 13 guests. He was one of the aforementioned guests. And he, of course, is, well, honestly, they should ask him for help. However, Sir Charles wants a bit of the spotlight, and he wants to woo this girl named Egg. And therefore, he decides to adopt the role of a amateur detective. And he decides to investigate this second death after Mr. Babington, the death of Sir Bartholomew Strange, who also came to the party of 13 guests, and also the fact that several people, and in fact, most of the people from our dear Sir Charles's party, was actually at Sir Bartholomew's party, excluding, of course, Sir Charles himself. Who could be the chilling murderer? Who apparently with no, no, nothing, no motive at all, killed Mr. Babington, then killed Sir Bartholomew Strange with nicotine poisoning. Who could have done this? Who dared to do this? We have no idea. And Sir, Sir, and Sir Charles, Mr. Southwaite, and Egg, the girl, together they make an amateur investigation about this particular mystery. And they find, all they find is more puzzling stuff, and they just can't figure it out. And that's where our good old, de good old Belgian detective, Detective Hercule Poirot, comes in. Can Poirot find the murderer? who apparently has no motive, no apparent motive, no way they could have possibly benefited from killing Mr. Babington and Sir Bartholomew Strange. Can they find the murderer? Who knows? Okay, a couple things. So I've read quite a few Agatha Christie books, for example, and I've seen, I'm starting to develop like a general idea of what kind of misdirection she uses. It's like, for one, it's like, okay, there's, a very obvious motive, and then suddenly that motive is proven wrong, like just completely wrong. And then all of a sudden, that motive is actually right, and that's how the book ends with an enormous twist. That's her first style of writing, of, well, twisting us over and screwing us over. And the second way is that there's a very apparent motive, and goes on and on and on and on until almost the end of the book, and then suddenly a completely new motive appears at the end of the book. Magic. And Poro had known all along. And of course, those two are, so far, what I have read. Orient, Murder on Orient Express, Death on the Nile, um, etc, etc. I mean, all my books are over there. All my Agatha Christie books are actually at this shelf next to Sherlock Holmes. And from all of this, from all of these books, those are the two main formats that I have encountered. However, for this book, it is actually not fitting within those two formats. For this book, there was just no possible motive. There's just no motive at all. There's no likely motive. There's no motive that we can think of. For example, in, for example, the, let's say, The Murder at Styles, one of the first horror books. Um, in, that, in that particular book, the person who got murdered is very rich and has a big will on people. I mean, that's an obvious motive for wanting to kill her, trying to get her money. Um, and like, 
of course, the murderer on Orient Express, for example. The guy who got killed is literally a murderer and a child in that So, obviously, there are people who want to kill him. But this harmless old vicar named Nissa Babington, well, it just doesn't make sense. And probably the first I got the Christie book, or any mystery novel that I've read, where there's literally no motive that you could possibly think of that is included in the book. And let me just put some emphasis on three act tragedy. Not three part tragedy. Not anything else. Three act tragedy. If you want to solve the mystery, put the emphasis on the act. And like always, your book quester and the book quester can Poirot find this murderer, zero motive, zero clues. Can he piece it together in his little brain and prove it? Well, I guess you'll have to find out by reading this roller coaster ride of an Agatha Christie book. Goodbye!